Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. In this video, this is geared towards my first time and beginner painters, and we're gonna have a lot of fun painting this subject matter. So a few things that you're gonna see in the description box below. There is a link down there for a supply kit, and those are your basic supplies to get started painting at home, so grab what you need. What you're also gonna see in the description box below is a link to what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get your initial image on your composition before, or on your canvas before you even start painting. And for my first time in beginner painters, this is a nice way to not have to stress about drawing and you can focus more on the process of painting. Another thing that you're gonna hear and see a lot in the videos that I create, you have full permission to change up colors, switch out the composition, you know, change it, make it your own, even if you paint something entirely different than what's in the instruction. It, when you are kind of a little more comfortable with the painting process and you wanna uh, jump your skills up to the next level, check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy, and check out the Paint Your Pet course. On that, you'll dive in a little bit more to a value scale, and it is geared towards first-time painters, um, but you'll learn about your dark spaces, your highlights, and your main color. And when you paint something that you love, like your pet, you actually put more energy into it and you're gonna learn a lot more. So when you're ready to take it uh, to the next level, check out those courses on my online school. So I think we've actually talked enough. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the process of painting. All right, guys, it's going to be another fun painting today. So grab your supplies, make sure you turn on your favorite music, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now, once you have your traceable transferred to your canvas, um, we're going to start with painting kind of the sky. And I'm using the large flat brush, and we're going to make a light lemony yellow color. So I'm going to mix a little bit of, pull some white out, add a touch of yellow to it, and go in for a light lemony yellow color. And your shade may be a little darker or lighter than mine, does not matter. So we're gonna go right above that little horizon line and kind of follow the contour um, of the waves. So you're just gonna follow that line and we're gonna create this space maybe um, two to three inches above the water line with this light yellow. And if you have to mix your color a second or third time, totally okay um, if the shade is a little bit different. Because here you can see I added a touch more yellow to my mixture, going a little bit brighter. And if you feel like doing that, you can. Most things in my videos are optional. So I do recommend that you trust your instincts. And if you feel like deviating from what the video is doing, go right ahead. Full permission to do that. So now I grabbed the direct yellow, and again, just kind of going around the perimeter, the top part of that light lemony yellow color, and still kind of mimicking that kind of rolling shape of the, the water line. All right, so you do want to clean your brush really good after this. Um, we're going to put a border of white um, before we add our blue. And by putting this border, so you're just, I moved down to a smaller brush, and super exciting, white paint on a white canvas, but I want you to go right above that yellow, and you're gonna go maybe a quarter inch above that yellow with white paint, so that way when we add our light blue color and we bring that towards the yellow, we'll be mixing the light blue into the white and not the yellow, because if we mixed yellow and blue, we would get green, and we don't want that in our sky. All right, this is a good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. You're gonna clean your brush out really good. We're gonna go up to light blue and we're gonna fill in the rest of the sky. So just like making that light yellow, you're gonna pull some white aside, add a little touch of blue to make a light blue. And again, your shade may be a little lighter or darker than mine. And you're gonna fill in the remaining top portion of the canvas with this blue paint, light blue paint. 
And as you are bringing it down into that little strip of white that we applied right above the yellow, I want you to just be a little more conscious as you're bringing the two colors together. Use light pressure to do your blending. Um, and you can bring it up as close to the yellow as you feel comfortable. Again, this is just getting you good practice with your brush control and just getting comfortable with wet on wet blending. And as you're blending this uh, light blue into the white, that is literally what you're doing. It's called wet on wet blending. So here I'm moving down to a smaller uh, brush, just cleaning up a little bit of the white. And then I'm gonna grab a bit more of a darker blue and now I'm actually just smearing that white into the yellow just so they can kind of both work together. And then we're gonna make a bit of a darker blue and we're gonna throw that in our sky and go just a touch darker. And here you can see them just using light pressure as I go right atop, uh, on top of my two colors. And again, the more that you paint, more practice, this gets more and more comfortable. So here making a medium blue and painting right on top of the light blue we were just working on. So you do want your background wet, that light blue wet as you introduce the medium blue. And then just like you can see, moving that brush back and forth, mixing the paint directly on the canvas. This is actually one of the more therapeutic aspects of the painting process. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna be moving into light blue again. So going back up to that large flat brush, making that light blue one more time. And again, similar to what you used um, on the top of the canvas, but if it's a little darker or lighter than what you were using prior, totally okay. So we're gonna fill in a good portion of the bottom and this is gonna be below the water line as we're looking out at this little sea turtle. And again, just sticking with that light blue, I am applying the paint rather generously so that way we can do some blending. So if you happen to have paint that dries rather quickly, uh, apply your paint a little bit thicker so it can stay wet a little longer or work in smaller sections. So maybe watch the full video, um, watch the progress, and then um, take it section by section on your painting. So here, I'm still sticking with the light blue, but as I mixed the color, it was a little bit darker, so I'm adding a little bit more white in the next step right here, and you can kind of tone it down. So there's not an exact formula for painting. Um, you do have to work with the variables of what kind of paint you have, uh, where you're at in the painting process and your comfort level, and you adjust each time. So even if you make a color and it's too dark or too light, you can always adjust it directly on the canvas. So basically try not to stress out too much while you're painting. Just the fact that you are painting makes you successful. Um, I used to tell all my students that the only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So I'm really proud of you for painting at home. It does take a lot of courage. You are stepping out of your comfort zone and you are doing a fabulous job. So be kind to yourself as you're going through this process. All right, so we now have just about everything filled in except our little turtle. And if you even have a little variation of your shades of blue on here, totally okay, because we are gonna be adding more colors and different variations on top of this base color. And to keep that kind of light, all right, so go ahead, pause your video and take a progress photo. Now we're gonna move up to the turtle and I'm using the medium flat brush. And we're gonna start with yellow and add a touch of green and you can get to whatever shade of green that you like. Um, this one I'm actually using a bit of a lighter green and you're gonna fill in um, the head of the turtle, those little flipper arms, I believe the feet and I think our uh, shell of our turtle is gonna be a bit darker with some more browns in there. And if you need to, feel free to move down to the small pointy brush if this wide uh, brush is a little bit too much for you. Nothing's wrong with adjusting and adapting the tools um, to help your comfort level. All right, now we're gonna grab that direct green. We're gonna paint it right on top of that shell. I think we come in later with the brown. Um, 
And I just like having a little um, difference between the shell and the body. So if you ended up using a darker green to begin with on the body of your sea turtle, you could probably switch out the green for the shell and use your raw sienna, your light brown. And by holding that brush kind of at a 45 degree angle, I can smooth out some of those brush strokes. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We are at what we call the underpainting, so now we're gonna go back and add more details on top of this. So still with that middle flat brush, we're making a medium blue, medium lightish blue. And we're gonna be painting right on top of um, our water area, and we're gonna start creating some depth. So as you are watching what I do, um, I want you to observe the place that I put each of the colors and the general shape that I make with each of those colors. And I want you to mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas at home. And what you're doing is strengthening your power of observation. And this is a skill that's beneficial in every aspect of life. Um, so the more that you watch the videos and kind of interpret what you see and then translate that to painting on your canvas, you are strengthening, like I said, that eye-hand coordination, uh, your power of observation, and it gets easier and more comfortable with more and more practice. And strengthening the power of observation is great in business, everyday life. The more observant you are of trends and your coworkers and other things, the better you could have um, a, a better working relationship with your coworkers and possibly even be better at your job for being observant. So a lot of things that you learn in life do translate over to the real world and um, kind of our everyday life. So that's why art is such a healthy and therapeutic outlet for each person. And that's why each person's gonna have their own style. All right, so taking that medium blue, you can see kind of the shape that we made and it's surrounding that little sea turtle, but also keeping a bit of a perimeter between the moving um, surface water, those little waves, and the water that's underneath. And again, if your shade's a little bit lighter or darker than mine or a completely different color, totally okay. Um, I'm just really glad that you're painting and taking some time out of your day to get creative. All right, so grabbing a bit darker blue and blending that in to the medium blue. And again, as you do this, you'll just get more and more comfortable with what it feels like for the pressure of your brush, what it looks like to mix colors, um, and it will become second nature the more that you paint. So be kind to yourself as you're in those beginning stages. All right, so now I'm taking that middle flat brush, holding it kind of sideways to make these long little lines. If you need to, you can move down to the um, small pointy brush to make these. And we're imagining that these lines here are those kind of um, water reflection, reflection lines um, that kind of ripple on the sand when you're in closer to shallow water. So again, just giving an illusion that we've got these three layers, um, the sky, the surface of the water, and even the bottom underneath the water for this little turtle. And as you get into the groove of painting, um, and no matter what you're painting, I want you to get in the habit of propping your painting up, getting out of your chair, and looking at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. And when you look at your painting from that distance, that's the normal viewing distance for most things in life, and especially artwork. And this is generally the distance that most of the viewers, uh, friends, family, anybody that's looking at your artwork is gonna observe it from. So it generally looks better from that distance. That's just part of life. But it's also a chance for you to look at it from that distance and go, oh, do I need to make that a little more blue? Do I need to make that a little bit darker? Do I need my highlight a little bit brighter? Um, and you are conversing with your painting and changing based on what you see. All right, so here I'm actually grabbing that direct blue going right over some of the um, wavy lines on the bottom of the uh, seafloor in here and then moving up a little bit further. If you were already using a, a rather dark blue to begin with, you can switch over and use purple for this. 
um, and that will change the shade of your water a little bit, or you could even mix teal and blue to make a darker shade. So there's always options and your instincts will generally guide you in the correct direction. All right, looking good. Take a progress picture, pause your video. You're doing great. Now we're gonna move into white paint and I'm still using that middle flat brush, but if you need to use the small pointy brush, go right ahead. And these are gonna be kind of some small choppy lines, just kind of breaking up the space and getting three values on here. So again, just kind of observe the general place and direction that I put each of these colors. Now, as you're making these lines and as we get into uh, the next section of this painting, we're gonna be making smaller lines. So I want you to play with the pressure of your brush. A little more pressure is gonna make a wider brush, a little lighter, or, uh, more pressure is gonna make a wider brush stroke, lighter pressure will make a skinnier brush stroke. So here I actually just cleaned the brush off, um, got off most of the moisture, so it's kind of a dry brush, and just using light pressure, going right over the white, right over the blue, right over the middle blue, and slightly blending these two. So kind of using light to medium pressure to kind of squish these two colors together. So play with it at home. You'll, you'll kind of find your groove with it. And when if you paint this a second time, you'll find your groove even quicker because you had already done it. So I do recommend painting your images once or twice or even maybe make, blah, waiting a year um, to paint it again so that way you can see your visual uh, progress. All right, so now we're gonna be going into these skinny lines and I'm using just the direct white and I am using that middle flat brush and I'm holding it sideways. So I'm using more of the skinny portion of the brush. And we're kind of hovering above and below some of those um, weird blobs that we made on the bottom of the seafloor, that reflection. And we're again just imagining that this is the highlight that's shooting down from above the water through the surface of the water onto the ground. And like I said, if this is too much to do with that medium flat brush, move down to your pointy brush and just kind of play with that light to medium pressure. We are gonna do this with the direct blue and medium blue, so you're gonna get some good practice with this. And that's really what a lot of painting is, is just practice. If you're holding your breath right now, take a big inhale. I'm really proud of you, you're doing great. You have transformed a white surface into a 3D uh, scene and you know that's awesome and hopefully again while you're painting you have forgotten about the rest of the world for a little bit and that is the best aspect of painting. All right so here just going over a few other little areas still using the white and you'll notice that the white is on the transparent side, especially if you're using student grade paint. So I do grab more white quite often and rather generous with the application. All right, so now we're gonna move into black paint and I am moving down to the small pointy brush. We're gonna put some of our landscape on here. So we're gonna start at that <clears throat> horizon line or water line. And you can see on the left-hand side, I made a line right above it, you know, maybe two inches out. And then we're putting a little mountainscape on there and then filling that in. You have full permission to put any landscape that you want here. You don't even have to do this portion, um, completely your call. And then we do have a bit of a distorted landscape that's gonna be above that uh, water line, that bubbly water line. So we're starting on the right hand side and again, just kind of outlining that shape. And then we're gonna have our interesting kind of landscape and it's completely distorted. So it does not have to be perfect. And then we'll put a few little palm trees on there. All right, so for the palm tree, you put the trunk on first and use that kind of light pressure and then each little palm frond start at the end of that palm tree, the end of that trunk, and then you're just gonna make little um, curved lines that radiate out from the top of the tr uh, tree trunk. There you go, now that my hand moved, you can see it. It's almost kind of like spokes on an umbrella or spokes on a wheel, and you can have as many palm trees as you like. You don't have to do the little individual leaves, just the little palm fronds are enough. 
And then the ones on the distorted side, we've got a few that kind of, um, I guess, kind of fall off the edge of the canvas or cut off by the edge of the canvas. And because it's distorted, um, they wiggle. They're going to be in kind of a weird position. You'll see where I put a few more on there. Um, but you get a lot more freedom with the distorted side compared to uh, the more realistic side of the left side. So like I said, add as many or as few palm trees as you want to your landscape. Remember to breathe. If you're finding that your brush is uh, shaking as you touch the canvas, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and that will make it a little bit easier for you. All right, so here we're adding kind of action lines inside um, the water. And you can see that I'm just making these small little dash marks, a few longer lines. And again, it's just gonna give one more intense kind of pop um, for the movement in our water. And it would also be reflecting from the stuff around it. And here we're putting birds in the sky, which is basically a V with wings or that kind of squished out M shape, um, whatever you've done to make your impression of birds. All right, good place to pause the video, take your progress photo. You guys are doing great. Um, we're gonna move into the pointy brush and white paint. And we're gonna start putting some of these highlights on top of the water, a little below. These are gonna be little dash marks. And again, just observe the kind of general direction and overlapping and the placement that I put these. And it is kind of nice to have that pure white. So every, just about every brush stroke, I am grabbing more paint. Um, I want to have a bit more contrast with this white on top of the blue and even next to the black. So definitely take your progress picture before adding the white and then take it after and just start noticing how it looks different with the addition of this single color. All right, now we're gonna move back into the yellow and green, starting with the yellow, adding a touch of green. And we're still going, I'm going for kind of that light green, but whatever shade that you used um, for the body of your little sea turtle the first time. I'm just basically putting a second layer on top of this to give it a bit more opaque coverage because I am using student grade paint uh, for this video. So if you're using student grade paint at home, you can put a second layer on there for more opaque coverage as well as um, just apply it thicker. And here you can see where I grabbed some of that direct green and placed it right on top of the lighter yellow green and then now we're blending and softening um, that color into it. So the blending's the same as that wet on wet blending, just in a smaller section. And just like what we did on the horizon line in the sky by adding, uh, by mixing the colors together and softening that yellow and the white and the blue. So now we're grabbing the raw sienna, the direct by itself, and we're gonna put it on the top of this turtle shell. And again, applying that kind of thick and leaving some of the underbelly as the green. All right, this guy's coming along. We are in the home stretch of the painting. We're just gonna be putting some details in now. All right, so I cleaned the brush. We're going to white paint. We're gonna put a few little highlights on the top of the shell. And again, just kind of uh, placing that color on top of the raw sienna, it's still wet, wipe that brush off, and then just kind of smush that white into the raw sienna. And this is how you're doing the wet on wet blending. And same, we're gonna use that white, place it kind of on the top of the head of the turtle, a little bit on the uh, front top fin, and just like the shell, you're gonna place that color on there, and then because the green is still wet, you're gonna smush that in to the color underneath. And sometimes it's just nice to go, I'm smushing paint. It's very therapeutic. The technical term would be called blending, but smushing is fun. 
All right, so we're gonna add a shadow to the shell and we're gonna take a little bit of the black and burnt sienna. I want you to hang out closer to the brown, but we're just basically making it darker. And you're gonna up You know, you're basically gonna mix the black and the brown and hang out closer to the brown side. You're just making it a little bit darker. And then you're gonna take that mixture and kind of uh, right on the perimeter of the shell and that little underbelly, you're gonna add the darker portion. Then you're gonna move into the pure black and on the bottom of the belly and right underneath the shell, we're gonna add that direct black into the green and then soften or blend it or smoosh that darker color into the green. You're doing a great job. Your little turtle's making his way out to the ocean and it's gonna live and thrive and be happy. So life is good. All right, so going back to the yellow and green mixture, we're gonna put some reflecting colors in our water because the colors of the turtle would be reflected on the surface of the water. So again, just notice kind of the random places that I put the dots. Now I'm moving in with the direct green and kind of mimicking that shape. So if you go to the water and you look and you see reflections, start noticing the different colors that you see and are those colors in the environment around it. So a big part of art is just learning to be um, observant. And doing the same thing with the raw sienna putting that color in there a few places. It would be reflecting on the water from the shell. And it doesn't have to be a whole lot. A little bit goes a long way. Now we're back to the pointy brush. We're gonna use that direct blue paint, the dark blue by itself. And same thing, we're gonna put some lines in here, giving it a bit more contrast. And then we will be going down to the bottom of the canvas and kind of the, the floor of the sea, the sand, the bottom of the ocean. Um, and we'll be adding more wavy lines like we did with the white. So again, just kind of observe the general place that I put the blue. Um, don't be afraid to overlap your other colors with this blue paint. Um, and this will be basically our final step for today's painting. So I'm really proud of you guys for painting. You've done a great job. Please email me photos of what you paint. Email them paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com and don't wait too long to do your next painting. All right, so if you need to, we're gonna be moving into a medium blue and then we'll move back into the darker blue. And as soon as my hand moves out of the screen, you can see what we're doing. And basically kind of softening that line, pulling in some of that um, medium blue into the sand and then we'll start taking, there we go. That's what I was looking for, the direct blue or a darker medium blue and pulling those lines kind of over into the corner over that medium blue from the beginning. All right, so here again, that small pointy brush overlapping these kind of wavy blue lines. They are overlapping some of the light blue. Um, they're short, choppy little brush strokes. Don't think too much as you do this. Have fun, slap that paint on the canvas. Um, think about these as little motion lines behind the turtle. Uh, these are the direction that he's swimming. And then when you get to the bottom um, for that seabed, again, there's just these overlapping like web of lines from the reflecting light above the water line. And then here, if you go back into that light blue or medium blue, again, it's really kind of cool to see where you're using the same color, but it looks a little different based on the shade of blue that you're putting it on top of. And that's a fun concept to explore as you paint. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope your paintings right, turned guys, out really nice. I'm today. proud of you. So proud I hope of you. you are proud of yourself. Um, and I Don't hope maybe the uh, concept of painting forward. isn't as scary as it maybe it was before you nope. did this painting. So like I said, I'm really proud of you. As you're uploading your videos to social media or your pictures to social media, right, uh, back, please tag me green, at or hashtag paint with love joy or uh, email me your photos, paint with love joy at gmail.com. Um, 
So guys, it truly so much is through your pictures that I post today. on social media fun. and you talking about of, these uh, videos to other people that has helped this channel grow and, and it encourages people that have never painted before so to a give a it day. a try. Um, and if you found a lot of uh, relaxing qualities after going through the painting process, please share that with your community so that they can have those relaxing qualities as well. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or things that you would like me to paint in the future, please just leave a comment um, below and I will add it to my production list and check out all the other videos I have on here as well as my online school and keep your creative efforts going. All right, so thanks so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. I really appreciate it and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Yeah.